Good evening, everybody. Hello. Right, another day, another stream. Hello. So yesterday there wasn't much that happened because I uh, um, I was busy with something else, you know, real life kinds of things. And that cut into the stream time. Yeah. So, yeah, I also kind of didn't do much because I was hitting a roadblock where I didn't know how to proceed. I've spent today uh, quite a bit of time trying to think about it and I'm still undecided on what to do. Um, I did do something though, which is I rewrote most of the packet stuff or the uh, file stuff for the region to use a more general protocol over a packet class, which allows me to use both zip files, but also just straight up directories on disk or any kind of other storage format that can store um, binary blobs that select offsets. So this should make it much easier to represent things and uh, extend them in the future for different file formats if I ever need to write one. But also one more benefit of doing this is that it allows me to do to create sub packets, meaning that if there are packets within packets basically, so for instance if I have some kind of collection of regions, then I don't need to store literal zip files. I can just create something with an offset into the um, structure and that'll do fine. So that's what I did. I haven't tested it yet, but it should work. I'm pretty sure it should. Famous lost words and all that, but whatever. I'm not too concerned that there will be any big bugs lying in wait. What I'm much more, which I'm much, what I'm much more, watch I'm much more um, concerned about is this question of what to do with the story and everything else. So there is a question of where to store the quest and story data, and and how to associate that data with uh, the regions that actually make up the gameplay world and how to associate that with actual code that implements the backing functionality of that. So the reason I'm conflicted on this, well, let's just, okay, I'm gonna make some examples of what we could do. So if we look at the world class itself, then there's not really much it stores. The only thing it stores is a storyline object and the maps uh, association list. And so there's not really much there aside from really the storylines which need to be uh, some kind of format that can encode um, the dialogue interactions that can encode the graph of different tasks and their requirements and things like that. And so, there's only really that, but we could write a, a format that just stores this storyline stuff so it can store individual quests and tie them together into one big storyline. But when you think about it, this is kind of, the storyline is, about the most global kind of thing we have at the moment about the game because that's going to be for the entirety of the game this is going to be present and it's not going to change unlike the regions which need to be unloaded and reloaded and unlike the chunks which switch, uh, switch around and stuff like that so this is sort of omnipresent and it's tied to everything it needs to have access to particular kinds of named objects that are working in the game. So it needs to have access to like this character or this character, or needs to have to access to this region and needs to know information about it in order to know whether 
you know, this kind of quest has ended, or it's completed, or if it changed in some way, or whatever. So, the storyline is intricately connected to almost everything that actually makes up the game itself, rather than something that just makes up an engine part that can be reused or adapted to form actual game content. And so, the question becomes, well, does it really make sense to separate this out into its own thing? Wouldn't it be more sensible to tie this together with the rest of everything that also makes up the game? Which means both all of the regions should be part of this sort of world representation and all of the assets that need to be done or need to be used for that as well plus all of the kinds of code there that are that is specific to the game itself so for instance when we define a new kind of npc like here and this should be part of the world definition rather than tied in with the rest of the quote unquote engine code and that's kind of what i've been debating on one hand, bundling everything together seems like a cleaner solution and it would allow you to basically create entirely new games within Leaf itself and sort of, you know, send them around and whatever, if that ever comes to fruition. So it would allow a lot of modding and essentially using the game to make your own games with it with a similar kind of basis. But on the other hand, it almost feels like architectural overkill. It feels like I'm trying to separate too much, and I'm not sure if it's worth it. So I've been... <laughs> it's... I can't even really put it into words properly what bothers me about it so much. It's just a really bad feeling I get either way. So both of these options I can't really settle with, for whatever reason. And I can't seem to properly articulate it beyond what I've talked about now. So, yeah, I've been stuck in a rut. Yes, mm, indeed. <laughs> On the plus side, the new packet backend allows me to still represent all of these files, source files and everything else on disk, rather than having to swash them in a zip archive, which will make, you know, editing and updating a lot more bothersome. But nevertheless, it's still annoying. <laughs> In some sense. In another sense, this feels like something I've wanted to do all along anyway. So, at some point, I would like to, you know, sell the game. So far, I've been doing everything open source. All of this stuff is on GitHub for anyone to see and look at and run. There's no license file, so technically you can't look at it, but you can. It's public. Um, and my idea was that essentially the engine itself is public, but everything that's specific to the actual game would be separate, private somehow. And through that, uh, you know, I would retain some kind of sellability while retaining open source to some degree. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough decision to make. It's also a, kind of a b big question about what is really part of the engine and what is part of the game. At some points it starts to blur. For instance, is the player stuff, is that part of the engine? Like, is the movement physics and stuff part of the engine or part of the game? You know? More leaning towards it being part of the, the engine, but... I don't know, you can make an argument either way.
Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know really what to do. What I can do is sort of explore the more complicated option a bit further. So actually going ahead and specifying a container format for the more complex option of the world file format. So not just storing quests, but storing everything. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and start on that and see where it gets me. Alright, so the basis of the file format is the same as for the region. We have a meta.list file, which is the only required file, um, which has a header, that has an identifier and a version, and then some metadata information block. And from there on out, everything is dependent on this version, so the contents of the file can be properly Well, written. perhaps an epiphany regarding what is game and what is engine will come eventually. I don't know, I don't feel like that. I don't feel like that's really going to be the case because the lines really, really blur. You know... <laughs> there's a lot of things that... could go either way. And, like... As far as I understand from history, pretty much any game engine starts out with the idea of being general, but then if it's privately owned, it's just going to morph and keep getting things that are specific to a certain game added. Um, but even then, it's not, you know, is the player movement part of the engine or not? It's not really... you can't... you can make arguments for both, I can see, you know, reasons for saying both, but, uh, I'm inclined to say that it is actually both and not just either one of those, so I don't know. There's not a just a black and white lining in this, or at least I feel that way. Anyway. So looking at this, what do we need to store? We need to store quests, which means... Or we need storyline, which means we need to store quests, and we need to store... And from there we need to store... Tasks. There's a space too many. And we need to store interactions, and from there we need to store uh, download. Ah, uh, right. And then we need to store uh, source code, and we need to store assets okay so for the source it's kind of important that uh, there's a loading order so we need to have some file that defines it um, which uh, would lead down the very dangerous road of trying to use ASDF for this which I'm going to avoid but it's Again, a very painful reminder that I should start working on my own build system at some point. Ah, uh, yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, uh, packet must contain... Thank you. 
So I don't know what's required really beyond just the listing of the source files in the order you want them to be loaded. Because I'm pretty sure there's nothing else that really needs to be done. So just that, I guess. Suppose the organization of things isn't really that in, in, uh, important. So it could be at the top level or wherever in a subdirectory. Naturally, what we lose by doing this is a uh, compilation of files, unless I do my own way of doing that, which I might. Um, I'll have to see. Okay, uh, right. system maybe we should make a single file that contains the storyline information and the source information sense to have a separate file that just defines all the quests and your tasks. And I feel like doing a separate file for each piece of dialogue is better, so that the graph editor just can call out to a source file editor that directly writes and reads that file, so I can, you know, just invoke Emacs or whatever you choose to handle the um, formatting and everything. We need another representation for the quest in this, since there's none. Status. Don't really need that. The status needs to be part of the save file format, which is another deal entirely. Um, Storyline is clear.
actually we can turn this into Wait, what was the syntax? Radio. Ah, uh, table type. Yeah, that was that. Okay, good. I remembered correctly. Hooray. Good of me to do that. I forgot. Uh, right, we can just define the source type externally. It's fine. Triggers should be global, so not specific to a quest, but you can hook them from anywhere. Mm. Questions, questions. Has to be at the top level, so never mind. Right? Yes, okay, so it's not. A okay, good. I got confused for a bit. Because this does not mean the same as this. Uh, and same for this. Uh, right. Okay. 
Anyway. So Okay, um... Start should really be called the quest. Let's put that up here somewhere. Oh, it's already a 
describe with him, okay? Oh, nice. The fact that the tasks are in here is just a structural thing, they might as well be unrolled since they're now named, uh, but it just seems more appropriate this way, unlike triggers which might be shared between different quests. Okay. thing that's explicitly not mentioned anywhere is the resources and I think that's mostly because it's not important to write down the resources anywhere except where they're used and that will be directly within source files so there's no description within this structure for where they are I guess we should so define a pool at least to standardize the lookup. So, <clears throat> oops, voice crack. Um, So we haven't defined the regions yet at all. Um, where do I want to put that? Is it even... I could just have it in a directory and use the directory listing for that, I guess. Yeah, that seems fine.
that should should be good enough, question mark, maybe? I don't know. Well, first I need to fix up the quest representation of everything because... Oh. Not like that. Oh, right. So it's a describable already. Task is also describable. Good. So we only need the interaction to have a trigger. Uh, a name. Well, does it need a name once it's compiled in? It doesn't really, does it? Uh, so never mind that idea. Okay, right. So we go back to the world and we see what we can do here. Well, actually, if I look at region now, functions should be very, very little. What they actually do to load region and say region parts. I guess it should define a, a base region to start out with as well. Or, hmm, that's an interesting question. Maybe it should instead define a base save file to load from. Or maybe that's covered in the source code. Hmm. Uh, this otherwise so the idea being that when the world is loaded it loads all this stuff in and it then um, if there is no save file that's being loaded explicitly it loads a specific default one to know which standard uh, region to load and how to set up the initial quests and everything. I think that's reasonable. Mm. Yeah, so I think I'm going to change the system thing to be a bit more uh, structured, I guess. going to be a quite a while before the game can be tested successfully again this is gonna be a bit of work which always makes me uneasy when there's big batches of changes that I can't really test very well on previous projects whenever that happened or sometimes when that happened yeah I, uh, I know that feeling I would sometimes just spend days not working on it because I was so scared of testing it. and I, Or not scared, but I just really didn't want to test it. Because I know, knew it would be annoying as hell. <laughs> Alright, anyway. So maybe we should actually name this stuff and put it into... Yeah. Run, coward! This should go into the packet. Oh, packet. 
hack it as soon. Slow pack account thing is also bad. Uh, easier. Where is that even used? It's only used here. Afterwards, do I still need make six stream? Not like that. Call it that. and steal it for the world thingy. Sort of finish. Um, let's see, I can make a better way of dealing with that.
maybe I should have a Chorus version kind of thing. Yeah, let's do that as well. Aside from these two methods, these are actually pretty general. I'm wondering whether I can remove those as well, or rather factor them out. question again becomes whether the level shouldn't just be the world. Probably should be. Should probably be, to be honest. So let's merge these together. There's a lot of things that I've wanted to undo or redo or change and never just got around to it. So this being one of them. So let's change all this. Uh, can safely replace these, which should make up for the bulk of it. Um, how do I do that across multiple files again? Every time I need to deep, uh, Google this, Emacs, replace multiple files. I 
know it's there, but I never know what it is. Find, do, let, wait, what is a steered? Find, do, no, steered, do, find, regex, and replace. What a mouthful. Uh, First or like what? Ah. I just, oh my god. There we go. I don't need, uh... There we go, and then... Q. Uh... How do I do all of them? Question mark. Press exclamation mark. <sighs> Emacs is fucking confusing sometimes. Holy shit. Why is it not eating my exclamation mark, you piece of shit? What the fuck is happening? Oh my god. Can I just do that without the query? Is this like a thing where it doesn't recognize then, or or am I doing something wrong? Hold on. Okay, I was getting confused. Not be except for this part where I was not confused, and now it didn't do the thing. How do I go back? How? <coughs> oh Okay, good, thank you. Now... Well, it's coming together. Thank you. 
should be request region. Uh, where was that? Find. Now we just need to have these handlers, which are not handlers any longer. I think they're just on the handle, I'm not entirely sure. Then loop process calls, handle, good. should probably be a primary, but yeah, I'm gonna leave it like this for now. People are smack talking me on Bagger's stream right now. Uh, which is, yeah. Anyway, probably more interesting stuff happening over there, to be honest. Uh, let's see, so this should be fine. somehow switch out the existing region, really. Yeah, I'll have 
have to think about this. Uh, the problem is that, um, so the way it's structured right now, the world is, we might have to switch out regions if the player moves to a different region, of course, um, but the rest of the world should stay intact, which means we can't just use the trick we've been using before, which is to create a new scene and then load everything into that scene and then change the scene to that one to load all the assets and everything in so there needs to be a different strategy I think change scene will refuse if the scene is still the same which is not great so I think I'm not sure what to do yeah I'll have to think about that one that one needs some thought okay back to fixing up everything else uh, get out of there so this is no longer necessary. Yes. Where was the level file that was there right before world? Ideal. So I don't even need to worry about load order or any. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, let me worry about this for a second. Save world. This is not. Uh, copy load world. Yes, fine. This should all be fine. I think. Uh, well, actually, we don't have for the region. Is that? We had an author and the thing, author and the version here as well, just for posterity, I guess. should be very very similar to what we're doing here I think so the encoder should return that and do the needful over there Doxia. Uh, and then uh, I'll leave that up for later. For later. Yes. To Daima Shinsen Pai. Oh God. Why must you hurt me? We still need to patch up all the other references to level that existed, so let me go back to that. Gee, lots of stuff. Okay, editor. Find the keys first. Where's keys? Save. World. Probably be separate keys for saving the world and saving the chunks, but I'll worry about that later.
<laughs> no, no, no. So actually, save world. So this also doesn't make any sense anymore. So you can load the world into an existing scene. Anyway, how are you doing, Eudoxia, and how is everyone else doing in chat? For those that are still awake and haven't gone to snooze land, because it's been so boring around here. I'm doing pretty good. How are you, Shin? Hello, Bug13. Good to hear you're doing good. I'm doing alright. Uh, I had another... I uh, was initially going to... Uh, a friend of mine and I have a weekly meeting on Wednesday evening, and uh, he had to move it today. So that's been the second um, date this week that was moved to another day. Um, but it was actually fine because I didn't really know what to do for dinner anyway. I cooked some the remaining stuff I had from yesterday's dinner for lunch, and that was a big lunch. Um, minced meat patties and mashed potatoes, and it was excellent. That was really good. Highlight of my day. Uh, today yeah I, I worked a little bit on the game and then I uh, I started thinking some more about you know world building and story writing and things that I'm not good at and I uh, decided maybe it will be time to pick up a book again once every couple of years and so I looked through and looked around for good uh, either detective noir stories or good post-apocalyptic kind of things and uh, I found a couple of things that might be interesting, but um, I haven't seen anything that immediately, like from the blurb, I thought, whoa, this is cool. So if you have some recommendations for noir or uh, post apocalypse kind of things, preferably cyberpunk things, uh, then I will be very interested. I started reading one book on... Have Kindle. you read any Sherlock Holmes slash HP? Lovecraft fanfiction. It's more gas lamp than noir. What? <laughs> no. 
I'm not sure if you're joking. Are you serious? I'm serious. Okay. Well, I've never heard of fan fiction being good, so, you know, hence my confusion. Uh, Check out Gaslight Grimoire. Okay. Will do. But yeah, I'm mostly interested in... in in noir or post-apocalypse or uh, cyberpunk, especially if it's dealing with like androids and, and things like that, I'm inter interested in books about those kinds of topics so I can get some research material because this game is going to be about a lot of those things. I started reading one book, uh, kind of a detective story that I found on Goodreads, recommended there. Um, but uh, I might be diverging from the topic here, but what is your opinion on the R7RS version of Scheme? I have absolutely no opinion on Scheme. R7RS or otherwise. Aside from, I don't like list one. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, I have never looked into schemes. Uh, I don't really know much about them. Mostly because I learned common lisp and I've been happy enough and I haven't felt the need to check out other lists. So... I know a bunch of programming languages, but... Very little lisps. Uh, okay, that should be good, question mark. Uh, oh wait, never mind. I instinctively wrote the wrong thing. Good. Okay. That, I What's think, your opinion on ADA? I have no opinion on ADA either. I mean... The person Ada was pretty cool, but uh, the language, I don't know, I've never looked at it. I have some negative opinions on, on like, Haskell and Rust and, um, uh, Erlang, but that's not really interesting. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Actually, the editor was talking about one thing. Also, regarding cyberpunk, etc., research, have you considered reading RPG manuals instead of novels? I find they do a lot of the world building legwork. I have not, because I've never read RPG manuals.
e.g., the Cyberpunk 2020 manual, or Chaosium's Call of Cthulhu books. Yeah, the, the Cyberpunk manual I should definitely look at. That's a good uh, recommendation. Look Though at that. Cyberpunk 2020 is rather dated now. I mean, dated in what terms? Cyberpunk 2020, that's just real life now, LMAO. Uh, I don't know about that one, but... Sure. Um, let's see. Okay. Well, lots of changes made. Time to restart and see whether it blows up in my face. Predictions are it will. Here goes. It did! Yay! Transform actually, because this already modifies it, so it doesn't really make much sense for it to return anything in here. So let's just do that in here as well. Uh, or eh, I don't really care. Again, a bit off topic, do you think Common Lisp will change a lot in the next 20 years? Uh, no. Well, mm, depends on how you ask. That's uh, not a straightforward question. It's kind of a uh, Common Lisp, the language standard, will not change. But Common Lisp, the ecosystem, will definitely change. It's changing all the time. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Eh, I'll just leave it here. Uh, so we be... I don't care. Uh, where is that now? Still there? What? Stop composing emails. I somehow keep hitting that fucking email button, and I don't know how, and this button as well. Jesus. Uh. Percent transform. <clears throat> Okay, that should fix that up. OK, 
God damn it. <sighs> also, music ran out. Give me a minute. But I should get this refactor done. I don't know how the ecosystem is going to change. I assume it's going to change in ways of, you know, just adding tons more libraries. I hope there's going to be more sort of mainstream necessary libraries being added. And especially I hope that portability between implementations and operating systems is going to improve. Um, as it is right now, it's not great. Well, it's alright, but there's still a lot left to be desired. What do I start? Fucking... Where? What do you think is missing with regards to mainstream needed libs? good build system no um i do think that's missing but um that's not really uh, uh it's just i don't know now but i find myself a lot writing libraries that just don't exist i have over a hundred now on forever btfo I don't even know what those words mean. Um, what are you talking about? Still? Ah. So, since I'm new to the stream, what exactly are you building here? Obviously a game, but what are you working towards? Um... Leaf, which is a bad title that I have tried for a long time to find a better one for, but have been unable to so far, is supposed to be a... Uh, a 2D side-scrolling detective, platformer, post-apocalyptic, noir, cyberpunk story game, if you just want keywords. Um, yeah, I guess, I don't know. The writing part is the one that's still the least developed of everything, because I'm struggling with that a lot. Um, but, I hope to touch upon the sort of questions of morality between, you know, what kinds of things are acceptable for living beings to ask of machines, especially if they're sentient, so... I intend for there to be a sort of a subplot of um, a group trying to disassemble living androids to get at resources that they themselves can use for something. So it's kind of a question of, you know, at what point does a machine gain the right or the respect to stand on its own? Or at which point is it still just a machine to be used for any purpose? So that's a theme that I'm interested in and would like to tackle. Where is this fucking shit? Why is... What are you talking about, you garbage man? David Zindel's Requiem for Homo Sapiens Quadrilogy is great transhumanist fiction. Hmm. I'll look at that as well. Thank you for the many recommendations. This is great. I have been severely slacking for uh, 
reading anything the past few years because I've just been so busy with university and writing programs and reading books just never seemed like the right time for it. Also, anything by Greg Egan. Greg Egan, another name I know nothing about. So in the world of this game, I have a few things that I know about about it, sort of, that I've worked out, or at least noted down, you know, I don't know how things tie together very well yet, but I have a few fragmented ideas. So for instance, um, androids were created by a civilization before the apocalypse, and during the apocalypse, the information on how to create more of them or how to put together and everything was kind of lost along with a lot of other research and uh, knowledge. And uh, the androids of this world are sort of built in an interesting way where they are meant to be geared for a particular purpose, but um, the way this is achieved is not by, you know, just making them machines that are specifically made for this, because it turns out making AI that does that but is sufficiently independent is difficult so what they instead do is manipulate their sense of worth and their sort of what they like to do what gives them what makes them interested and uh, so the androids are sort of have an in, uh, built in stimulus or something that urges them to do what they should are built to do and uh, you play as an android lady whose job is to be a detective and solve crime cases. And so, this backstory of this character is that she just, you know, she gets... Uh, she gets to feel good when she does crime-solving stuff. And that's kind of the motivation behind it. And there could be many different kinds of androids that have different... The gearings, I suppose, for what they like to do. And then, it, of course, it becomes a question of whether this is just or not, or whether they should be allowed to change this, or, you know, all these kinds of things. Uh, call with packet does not accept the same things. What am I missing? It does not exist. What? Zip packet. Where the June Books and the Fading Suns RPG take place in a post collapse zero tech world. Yeah, Dune is something I've been looking at. Uh, that's one of the books I, I. That's been sort of on my radar and I stumbled across again when I was looking for stuff this afternoon. Oh, right. Here it is. Uh... Alistair Reynolds' House of Sons book is a great novel by itself, and also deals with the ethics of machine people. Cool. Now I've got way too many recommendations. <laughs> wondering how your save game system works. Are you using some kind of serialization library? Uh, no, I'm not. Um, I don't have... A, a, this isn't about save states or save games right now. This is purely about actually storing the, the game data. So where things are placed and what kinds of you know, attributes they have. 
currently I employ a system that allows it to be versioned so that uh, potentially if it ever becomes necessary uh, there's a backwards compatibility to previously existing files. Um, the actual formats are outlined in the doc folder so here you have a description a specification for the file format contents uh, uh, right now it's mostly just based on s expressions so I just serialize using the list printer and don't really worry about anything else the future version though might use a binary fact format or something else um, but right now for uh, you know getting started this is fine enough okay plush through finally let's see what else is it complaining about oh, let me actually Ah, the magic common lisp printer. Awesome, thank you. Sure. Um, yeah, it's based on, uh, where is it? So, the basic idea is that each of these files starts with a very simple header, which defines a, a magic keyword, and a version identifier, which is then used to construct a version object. And then there's these two generic functions. Um, well, for reading, it's decode payload, which calls it with a, uh, a version argument so that he can specialize on which version uh, this applies to. The global package that contains everything, the target that we're loading into, and the current payload that's actually being decoded. So using this, you can then apply specializations using you know, class. And that combines really nicely, especially because thanks to the fact that the version is a class, you can actually inherit versions and sort of incrementally specialize uh, changes depending on the version rather than having to rewrite everything or make other kinds of clutches. So, yeah, encoding does something very similar. Uh, yeah. to look through this real quick to see if I'm seeing any other oddities that the compiler noticed. Uh, scale, offset, tile size. It's fine. I don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Uh, these ones I might care about. What is this? You should write your thoughts, Re. Why are the languages a bad? <laughs> I don't think that's constructive, though. Uh... <laughs> I have some... Like, a year ago I was well-versed in Rust. And I had some things to say about it, but now I haven't used it for a year and I've forgotten most of the intricacies of why I didn't like it. So writing a, an article now would either be just inflammatory or useless at best. Or I would have to invest significant amounts of time to actually, you know, get back into it and remember why certain things bother me a lot. So that I could actually write a constructive critique. But I don't, I don't see the benefit for me in that. I just, uh, I don't care enough. I don't need to use Rust. I can just not use it. Uh, packet entry. Honorable name. Uh, thought I thoroughly tested everything in here. Oh, okay.
what was it called? Uh, balls. Gruff. There we go. Undefined verb legion. Zero. Oh, right. Because I'm the lazy copy pasta man. Required for completion. Right, I haven't done that yet at all either. That's also bad. Okay, time to reload and see whether we still get warnings like crazy. Uh, no, pack edge. Thank you. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Oh, that's odd. Why did that fuck? Why did that not happen before? Start not found. Oh. anymore at all. Okay. Time to commit this huge mess. Tons of refactoring. So it works. It does not. Because it requires a thing. Just a thing. Um. Wait, it has an it already. So.
probably make the graph tasks auto named. Please, oh my god. Traction does not have a... Oh right, because we don't need it on here, actually. <laughs> Wait, okay. Storyline we'll call with nil. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know what's up with chat. Maybe they don't like your question. Uh, do you mean where are you from in terms of geographical coordinates? Or do you mean like what's our life background or how did we find the stream or something like that? friends from all over um i don't know where things can come from just... Hooray, it works. Fantastic. 
if you need. By the way, I should have the Cyberpunk 2020 rulebook from 1993 in digital format somewhere. Uh, if you Google for it, you can also find it. It's like the first link. So, thanks, yeah, but, uh, I already found it. All right. So, yay, it works. Good. Things still work. Let's connect that as well. So, so, haben wir einen Deutscher in Chat hier. Wo hast du Deutschland? Kommst du denn? Okay, good. Uh, we're pretty much at the end of the stream. One thing I would like to do, though. Um, is in the moving, I believe. Causeway, huh? Okay. Bin ich noch nie gewesen. Glaube ich? Oder war der mal? Ich glaube, ich war mal in Karlsruhe. Bin mir jetzt nie, nicht mehr sicher, aber... Mein Gedächtnis ist echt scheiße. Alright. Um, I just went back to the right. So this should not be here. At all. Oh my god, phone. Having is uh, um, so currently I'm using a point test to determine whether the uh, player is within reach. So inbound. oh my god, phone shut the fuck up. I hate it when people send like 30 text messages instead of just fucking one. You can write multiple lines. Okay, right. So right now it uses a point test, which means it needs to be within the bounding box, which is way too small. Ideally, the interaction should already start a lot outside of it, maybe double at least the width, maybe one and a half the height, I don't know yet, but it should definitely be larger. Problem is because we're doing just a point um, test rather than an intersection test, uh, there's not really the way to do that, so I think I need to add a check for contain P with a VEC4 where the uh, Z and W coordinates are a um, are a, a box so let's do that Whoa. let's copy this stuff over At the very least, it should be intersecting bounding boxes, not middle of the thing. Inclusion test. Uh, so it should be from the plains 
Mm. I could use scan again, just to be lazy. Is there, is there a really cheap test to check whether two boxes are intersecting? Uh, I feel like there should be. Uh, aside from just point testing each edge. Um, can't think of any sims, any anything smart right now. So, mm. uh, Well, I don't need a ray. I already have ray intersection tests that are fast. I just need two static boxes. Well, just check if one of two opposite points is in the other box. Right, you only need to do corner tests, right? Wait, what? No, wait, one of two opposite points. No? That doesn't make any sense. If you only test two points, then there might be an intersection that you miss, right? You need to test the problem is defining opposite. I mean, you could define something like testing the point that's closest to... Or rather, knowing which pairs are opposite ahead of time. Yeah, you could also do something, I guess, like testing the point that's closest, but then doing the closest is much more expensive than just testing all four edges. So, I think I'm just gonna do that. Or scan. That's not right. The brain let's stack overflow answer. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay, so they do a uh, an axis intersection test. Yeah, that's a bit smarter. I see. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Wish I could think sometimes, you know. It will make things easier. Let's get this straight. You are looking for a way to test whether two rectangles are intersecting. Yep, that's all. Um, someone says I'm from the United States. What is your name? Like, I don't know how to. What that is. <laughs> I have to go. Enjoy your evening, Shin Tilda. Yeah. I'm gonna stop here in a second anyway once I have this. So yeah, thanks for stopping by and thanks a lot for your book recommendations. I'll definitely check a bunch of those out. Have a good evening, man. Okay, so no, this is right. Yeah, that actually, this test is pretty much the same thing as you do for a sweeping AABB test. Uh, right. Yeah, makes sense. I see it now.
Okay. So I only need to construct a vector four now based on Yep. Or nope. Never mind. This is not. Did I not implement? <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> fucked it up. Even that I fucked up. I hope I got this right. So to oh, test right. whether one yeah, rectangle yeah. intersects with another, check if the top left corner or the bottom right corner of the smaller rectangle are inside the larger one. But then you miss cases. You miss cases in in your in your example. You you, you don't you don't catch all the cases. It doesn't matter which one is the smaller one because uh, you, can, uh, you know this. And if you check these two corners, then you're fucked. You know? So that's not gonna work out. If you just check these two, then you don't notice an intersection. But there is clearly one. So what they do in the Stack Overflow answer is much simpler, well not simpler but very efficient and actually pretty smart. So what they do is they uh... Dang, it's getting a bit late. Yeah. <laughs> no worries man, happens to all of us. Uh, so what they do is essentially they um, subtract the, well they look at both coordinates separately. So what they first do is they subtract, subtract the x and y, which need to be centered. So, uh, so they subtract the x middles from both, and then use the absolute value. And if that value is smaller than both of the width, widths of the boxes combined, then it's within it. It actually makes sense, and it's pretty smart. And it's pretty much the same thing that happens when you do uh, an AABB sweep test. Which is, you can think of this in the same way of um, if you let me make this a bit smaller here. If you take one box and then you just make it larger by the second box, so you have one big box, and then all you need to do from there is just do a point test, whether it's within that big box, and that's pretty much the same thing that happens here. So that's a pretty neat trick. And yeah, it works. Cool. I think I'm gonna still make the width a bit higher than um, normal, just so uh, you can talk to people without being right in their face. So 1.5 is good. Yeah, something like that. Much better. Okay, good. What is your what is your nickname that you have in chat there? Is that like Arabic scripture or Arabic? I don't even know. All right, that was it for tonight. Actually, wait, I should commit what I have of the world format. World format spec. Okay. 
So that means it is indeed late. It is. A lot of things have been rewritten, changed, and that's fine and good. That's a refactor that needed to happen. Um, the actual world format saving and loading is not yet implemented, but I'll worry about that next. And after that is going to be safe good states. Progress. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna try, probably gonna work on this a bit tomorrow myself. So implement a bunch of stuff for the uh, saving and loading of the world format. And then hopefully I'm already done with that by the evening and we can check a look at safe states. All right, as always, thank you very much to everyone who uh, watches these videos. I know there's a lot of them. I know there's, uh, you know, a lot of content every day. And a special thanks to everyone who's in chat all the time, especially if you're contributing and chatting with me and stuff. It always makes it so, so much more uh, entertaining and uh, fun for me. So yeah, thanks a lot to everyone. I hope you have a good night. And uh, yeah, see you another time, hopefully tomorrow. Bye-bye.